if you know your onions, you're not going to take any wooden nickels from nobody. You'll get yourself a fit special. It's just the eel's hips for a big six like you. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, and we're taking a look at a Fitz Special. Now, this isn't one actually made by Fitzgerald. Uh, the numbers I've seen are somewhere between maybe 20 and maybe 100 of those that actually exist. They're very rare, they're very expensive. But what we want to take a look at today is just the concept. So John Henry Fitzgerald was a, uh, a noted target shooter. He was uh, an exhibition shooter. He was a former New York State uh, police officer. And uh, may, perhaps most uh, relevant to today's video, he was also an employee of the Colt Gun Company from like the 19 teens until uh, basically the end of World War II, 1944. And he was a gunsmith. He was, as I said, an exhibition shooter. He did a lot of, he was really a very public figure in the shooting community. And he came up with a number of interesting ideas. Now, first off, I don't want people to judge him entirely by today's interpretation of this pistol. He did a lot of other things. He was uh, a large, uh, largely responsible uh, or influenced the, uh, the, the development of the Colt Detective Special, which you'll see related to this. Apparently he was also pretty influential in the Colt Gold Cup, uh, 1911 offerings. He did a lot, and he's, but he's best remembered for this thing. What Fitz was going for was basically to have the best concealed carry pistol he could come up with for the time. And the time, by the way, is approximately 1926 uh, when he first started putting these ideas together. Now, Fitzgerald, I'm sure, is not the first person to have cut a barrel down. He's not the first person to have cut the trigger guard down. Uh, but what he did do is put all of these elements, also a bobbed hammer, uh, shortened ejector rod, he put all of these elements together into one gun and he really popularized it. And it's his name that has stuck uh, on this gun. Of course, his name was Fitzgerald. It gets shortened to the Fitz Special. But he made these for a number of, uh, of really recognizable names. Uh, Charles Lindbergh actually bought one of these. And then some of the guys in the firearms and, and self-defense and combatives world were also very interested. So uh, he actually gave one to Rex Applegate. Uh, Charlie Askins declared one of these to be like, to be apparently the best carry pistol he ever heard of. This was like the popular gun media hotshot sort of uh, thing going at the time. Now Fitzgerald made these primarily on police positive and new service revolvers. He was a gunsmith for Colt, so he only did them on Colt guns. And this was something that you could actually order from Colt's custom shop. It wasn't ever listed in their catalog, it was really just a word of mouth sort of thing. But it became fairly popular among some of the gun cognoscenti at the time. So what we have is a bobbed hammer, so that the hammer spur won't catch on clothing or a pocket when you draw the gun. Uh, the ejector rod on some of them has been cut down, on some it hasn't. Sometimes the, uh, the little, the, the knurled section at the end is removed. And again, that's just to lower its profile and prevent it from catching on things. The barrel has been cut down to typically two inches. And the front sight reattached, and that's a, a common thing. You could, in theory, you would actually have a, a slicker gun if you didn't bother putting a front sight on it. And you will occasionally see people who cut down pistols and leave the sights off. However, when it came to guys like Fitzgerald, uh, he was a, a target shooter, he was a competitive shooter, he was an exhibition shooter, he understood the relevance of sights, and even though most gunfights in reality happen at distances that are close enough that you might not actually need sights, uh, he wanted to have them on there. And so all of the, the real Fitz guns, in fact, have front sights replaced on the shortened barrels. Then, of course, the big uh, change is, or the, the distinctive change, is cutting off the front of the trigger guard. And that was done for a couple of potential reasons. Uh, one is, in theory, with large hands, uh, or even with small hands. If you don't have a trigger guard on the front of the gun, it's just a little bit easier to get, get your finger onto the trigger when you're trying to draw the gun and shoot. Uh, there is the necessary corollary of that, which is if you're perhaps not immediately trying to shoot, it's still easier to get your finger on the trigger. We're, we're used to like resting a finger on the trigger guard. That doesn't happen on this thing. And when you grasp it, you tend to have your finger right on the trigger all the time. In the 20s and 30s, that might have been seen as uh, not necessarily a bad thing. In today's much more safety conscious world, it's definitely seen as a bad thing. The other rationale for this 
was that uh, if it was cold and you were wearing gloves, a trigger guard would interfere with being able to shoot the gun, and cutting off the trigger guard gets rid of that problem. And when he did that, the, the front of the trigger guard is smoothed off, uh, rounded out, it's not left as a sharp edge, and it's generally cut so that it's even with the front of the trigger. So it still, I suppose, does some job protecting the trigger from being pulled, but uh, yeah, again, in today's world, that, that ain't gonna fly. Bobbing the hammer like that effectively makes this a double action only gun. It is still technically and mechanically uh, capable of firing in single action, but you have to do some weird stuff to like pull the, use the trigger to get the hammer partially back, grab it, and then pull it back to cock it. It's not something that you would actually uh, be doing with this. So that's just uh, the, the necessary and recognized trade-off of bobbing the hammer like this is you give up the single action uh, capacity. This particular gun is uh, it's on a new service frame. It's chambered for 4440, which would have been a pretty darn potent cartridge for the time. Uh, remember that when these came out, there were no Magnum cartridges. There was no 44 Magnum. There was no 357 Magnum. If you wanted a large caliber revolver, you were looking at 45 Colt or 4440. And the 4440 has a substantially larger rim, and it's arguably going to be a more reliable cartridge uh, in a revolver. So I can understand why someone decided to use that cartridge for this particular one. Uh, they've also plated the gun, uh, nickel plated it. That gives corrosion resistance. It's something that we don't do as much today because we have much better uh, dark finishes, but this was definitely, this, this was, there's a reason that you see so many World War II trophies that are nickel plated. Uh, people thought it made the guns look nicer, and it did legitimately give them an element of corrosion resistance, especially if you're going to be carrying this on body. It's going to be sweaty, uh, you know, especially if you live in a hot or humid environment. This is a legitimately beneficial thing to do to a gun like this. Today, of course, the Colt factory, if you asked them to do this in their custom shop, they would probably look at you in utter horror. Um, the idea of cutting away the front half of the trigger guard is like an unspeakable liability risk for a gun company today. Uh, but that, to me, that's part of what makes this interesting, is to look at how have our opinions on what the best gun is, how have that changed over the past, not even 100 years, 80 or 90 years? Because people are always coming up with new ideas, new concepts. Um, the, the goal is pretty much always the same. How do you get a gun fast into action, quick to use, and, and reliable and effective? But how people go about doing that changes dramatically as you can see from this. So it is cool that this absolutely did have an impact on Colt's development. It led to the detective special. And uh, we actually have not a small number of revolvers available today that meet a lot of the basic characteristics of this. A large caliber heavy frame revolver with a very short barrel. Uh, the, the cutaway trigger guard isn't something that you're gonna really see today. That I think most people have concluded that that's not actually a great idea uh, on, on balance. But because of guys like Fitz experimenting and coming up with ideas like this, that, that's what leads to development and innovation and uh, a lot of the really nice new guns that you can buy today in this sort of configuration. Now, if you're curious about this one in particular, this reproduction Fitz, uh, you can take a look at Rock Island's catalog page for it. They have uh, their pictures, their description, their price estimate, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can access that by way of ForgottenWeapons.com, which I have linked in the description text below. Thanks for watching.